Hi everyone, I'm Karim Sheik from Kindred Group, head of Lico Analytics, and uh, I'm here to talk about applying data science to monitor problem gambling. So let's talk about the challenge first. So what we want is to identify the RG risk level for a given player at a specific point in time and monitor it over time. Uh, to give it a better perspective, let's look at an example. So consider 48 players, all represented by the 48 gray dots on the right. Uh, to visualize it better, we will identify the winners and the losers and the change the size according to the amount lost or won by the player. And to this population, we apply the, our internal kindred RG risk level with a color coding, so from green to purple. And this highlights that you don't see a clear correlation between the losses or the winnings and the RG risk level, because our risk is mostly based on behavioral uh, data. And you can also see that there is a pink cross at the top, which means that this player is at medium risk level, but is actually winning money, while the only other player at this level is a loser, that little dot, pink dot uh, in the middle. While you can see the big orange dot in the bottom, uh, which means that this player is losing more than the big one, while at a lower RG risk level. And if we monitor that through time, then we can see the evolution and the different patterns in evolution of risk level and losses and all that. And what this highlights is the diversity of those uh, behaviors, losses, and RG risk levels. So this diversity is also increased by the number of actives, the number of products played, platforms you have the providers, external providers, uh, marketing uh, campaigns, the calendar effects, the countries and the time zone. So we have a lot of things that will make that task even more difficult than it is already. So what are our options to solve that challenge? The first one is business rules. So you have some RG expertise internally and they define thresholds. It's simple and clear and gives you thresholds such as highlight every player who played for more than six hours in a row, which is good because it's simple, clear, you know exactly what you're looking at. However, uh, the problem is that you get low accuracy by the end because uh, it's very hard to pinpoint a single variable that will highlight RG behavior. It's difficult to combine if you have a lot of thresholds and you want one risk score by the end, for example, and it's also market sensitive. So if, for example, you say, uh, let's take players who lose more than 5K, that value is different for a Londoner than it is for somebody in Romania, for example. So we have another option, which is manual modeling. And by this, I mean combining the RG expertise with data science, basically, but still building a model manually using mathematics and statistics. And by the end, you get some formulas. So this is more advanced and you can uh, modelize more complex phenomena. And once again, you know exactly what you are building, what you're looking at. An example of those would be uh, to modelize a significant increase in risk appetite. The problem of this is the complexity because you're gonna have to modelize all that manually. It's, it's a huge task especially for uh, such diversified behaviors. Uh, and you need to look at various things at the same time. So it's very difficult to get there just using that kind of uh, approach. So another approach is uh, in the family of the artificial intelligence solutions, um, supervised machine learning, unsupervised. Rather. Uh, so by unsupervised machine learning, what we mean is that uh, you get a data set with a lot of features in there and you apply data science algorithms on top. And those data science algorithms will define clusters. By clusters, I mean groups of players sharing similar uh, behavior, similar data points. 
this can be very easy to apply because nowadays you have a lot of uh, softwares who do that almost automatically. Uh, and you can also get very, very good results. So the clusters will be very different one from each other and the people are very similar in each cluster. And for example, you could potentially get a cluster with players who place very high stakes and have very long session duration, right? However, the problem is that it returns clusters, uh, which is not really what we're looking for. Because the problem with clusters is that although those guys share similarities, uh, you can't expect to have like some clusters with 99% uh, of problematic players in there, or they will be very small. And some clusters will have like 5, 10% of problematic players in there. So it's independent of the question you want to answer. It's just providing you clusters of players who, are, who look similar. And you also have a black box effect. So you, you're not 100% sure of why are those guys in the same cluster, which can be problematic sometimes. So the last option is supervised machine learning. So very similar to the previous one, but the big difference is that in your data, you add an is addict yes or no flag, which means that for every single observation, like a player at a given time, you have a lot of information about that player at this given time. And you have a flag saying if yes, this is a high risk player or no, it's not. Or you can also put a level one, two, three, four in terms of level of addiction. Then you apply some uh, machine learning on top, supervised machine learning, and it will learn from this data to be able to differentiate based on the data points that you gave, the yes and the no. Which means that by the end, if you provide similar data points from a different uh, time, time range, for example, or population, it will be able to rebuild that yes, no, he's an addict uh, flag, which is basically what we want. That is the end goal, basically, uh, because it answers precisely the question. And it also can be very easy to implement thanks to the latest progress in uh, software. However, uh, the big issue is that we do not have a big flag data set. No one can actually say that they have like, a, I don't know, thousands or millions of observation where you have an accurate flag saying yes or no, this is problematic behavior. And uh, you could, for example, select another proxy measure, like, for example, self-exclusion, and see that player self-excluded, yes or no, uh, thinking that it would share similar behavior than an addict. But the problem is that the algorithm learns from the yes and the no. So if you have a bunch of players of behaviors uh, where the guys are addict, even highly addict, but by the end they don't self-exclude, from the algorithm, it will think, OK, this is a no. And so by the end, you will never be able to capture those behaviors. And you also suffer from black box effect, depending on the algorithms you use. So by then, what was Kindred approach to that? We decided to uh, mix expertise with AI. So first step was to look at the RG expertise, uh, research, manual modeling, and AI unsupervised. So mixing all of that together to come up with a first score, which is actually how we have defined earlier in one of the first slides, the color coding in my uh, was 48 different points, I was using that first score. And then it's what well, as the aim is to provide that to the RG team, who will then take action to the accounts that are at high risk, but also review the cases provide feedback if, if the scoring is actually right or wrong, and then restore that so that at a later stage, we can actually apply a, a AI supervised learning. So through all that process, starting with a lot of research, a lot of understanding of what we want, building a first score, and then uh, storing the feedback, human feedback on them, we not only maintain a safe environment for our players, but we also build the future to be able to apply supervised learning and get more accuracy in our modeling. So let's give a bit more details. So it all started with uh, Maris Bonello, who had the brilliant idea of applying DSM-5. DSM-5 is like a globally used uh, checkbox, a list of checkboxes for each mental disease. And there is one, obviously, for uh, addiction. And this is based on nine criteria, uh, preoccupation, tolerance, and so on. They're all listed on the left. 
And the aim of the first exercise was to find how we can apply that to our actual data point within our database, looking at risk taken, time spent, betting activity, and so on. We looked at a lot of various dimensions. And just to give you an idea, uh, we will look in more details about risk taken. So risk taken, it was about answering the simple question, how much risk is the player taking? Which may sound very simple, but actually it's very complex if you want to resolve it globally. And uh, to do so, we looked at literature and found the cumulative prospect theory, uh, which is from a paper from 1992. It's globally used, uh, especially in finance and insurance, but not in online gambling. Uh, and it, if you apply it correctly, it allows you to define the risk aversion of a player for every single bet he places. But to apply it, we had to go through a lot of papers because from the initial theory, which is very general, to be able to apply it efficiently to our data set, it's very complex and you have a lot of mathematical formulas to solve. Uh, but by the end, after all this work that was uh, very uh, challenging, we were able to define that risk appetite of a player for every bet based on the stake, potential payout, probability of winning, and estimated disposable income. And that kind of questions we had plenty to solve. Uh, like, uh, is the guy escaping, chasing losses, losing control, and so on. And by the end, by doing that exercise, we've been able to build a risk score, the first one, from no risk to high risk, four levels of RG risk level. And uh, the most important uh, thing is that we get people with various risk level, but for various reasons, which means that we have we capture a lot of different behaviors that lead to a high risk, which is key because human is very diversified. See, so they have different ways of going crazy, of losing control. So you have to capture a lot of dimensions. And with this, we provide that through advanced dashboarding solutions to the RG team. So can they, they then can take action upon it. So give a phone call or just send an on-site message, whatever. And they can also adjust the level of risk. So if we, the algorithm says that it's a high risk level and they judge that it's actually a medium risk, it can actually see within that, actually store the information that within that time frame it wasn't high but medium risk. And this is very important because for long term, storing it properly, saying that player from this time to this time, this is what we calculated, was it right or wrong? And if it was wrong, this is what it should have been. We can then by the end apply it to uh, AI supervised learning. So we're not there yet. It's the next step in our process, but we, we are on a good way, let's say, to get there. So, to get just to this level, we had to use a lot of collaboration within Kindred. It's a good place for that, for collaboration, because people are happy to collaborate together. But it was involving a lot of different departments. Uh, and we understand that it's not every company who can build that kind of thing. So let's look at potential quick wins. So how could you get some decent results in an easier way? Okay, less demanding way. So, first thing, start with behavioral markers of harm. I listed four, which are quite strong. It's the time spent on the platform, number of bets placed per product, failed deposit for insufficient funds and reverse withdrawals. And separately, you look at financial indicators, classic ones, deposits and losses. Now, what you do with these is basically analyze the higher end of your population on each feature. So top 20%, top 10%, top 1%, and so on. Look at those guys and check if those guys seem to have a problem or not. To define, so using then your expertise, can define relative thresholds. So let's say that uh, those who are above 70% that are medium risk on that particular feature. 90% is very high risk and that kind of things. And by doing so, you will be able to combine all your behavioral markers of harm into a behavioral risk. And same thing for financial risk. Then combine those two together 
to map your actives and then ideally reach that kind of picture where you can map your players from low risk, medium risk, and then split between high RG risk and high AML risk, affordability problems. This is a simplified chart, by the way. I don't apply it that way, but it's just to give you an idea. So what did we learn by the end through all those exercises? We learned a few points uh, for short term and long term. Short term, split RG risk and affordability risk. RG risk should really be based on the behavior of the players because some players can have very strong addiction issues and just lose 200 pounds in a week, which will be completely off radar if you mix that with the financial parameters. However, for IML purpose especially, you need to look at affordability as well and then mix both. This is really an important point. Other thing is to uh, not underestimate the value of research and RG expertise because without knowledge, you won't be able to pinpoint the things correctly. Third point is to compare the player with himself, the history, but also the market overall uh, to see the fluctuation. Is it normal to have that kind of behavior in that market at this particular time? Because you can have like, for example, a big event going on or a big campaign, uh, bonus campaign that boosts a lot of players activity. And uh, it might trigger a lot of issues, uh, a lot of alerts. Uh, while they are not problematic at all and use relative thresholds so it goes uh, uh, is the same principle so by looking at a fixed threshold that is actually a value like uh, let's say somebody who deposits more than 500 pounds it's very difficult to be flexible because for example maybe on a particular day 500 pounds is actually way more or not that much while if you look at relative thresholds such as or, uh, is in at higher top 30 percent of the population on that uh, particular feature then you move with your population okay now the long-term ones is to build history for ai supervised because that's the only way that long term you will be able to build something strong enough and learn from your players go through that difficult exercise, you will learn a lot of things that can then be applied in other dimension of your company. So for example, fraud, bot detection and whatever. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time.